electric circuits are nothing but but electric circuits are nothing but normally cells resistors normally connected either in series or parallel connected in series or parallel or parallel in a closed loop there should be closed loop right otherwise otherwise we have seen that the current cannot flow you know in a closed loop you know closed loop okay now later as as you as you go later as we move later the electric circuits will start including not only cells not only only cells which are the source of of a, of a dc voltage dc voltage we also have we also have the the ac voltage okay so there could be an ac okay apart from resistors they apart from resistors they also may have capacitors also inductors and and at times maybe all three of them along with an ac voltage okay that is also possible but right now we are not into this this is the subject matter of chapter 7 of the cbse book correct so currently we are concerned only with only with the with the cells that means a dc voltage source that causes the current to flow and resistors connected in maybe any any fashion that that is given they could be either in series or in parallel and there are ways in which we can find out how something is in series and how something is in parallel but that we'll go into later okay now so so let me draw a sample circuit for you okay so 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 let us say i have a circuit which looks something like this okay this is this is not a circuit yet but then i'll i'll i'll, I'll add some resistors here and there and it say it looks something like this so so it looks something like this okay say this is a resistor this is another resistor this is another one say say this is 10 ohms say this is 20 ohms say this is 10 volts say this is 20 volts say this is 30 ohms okay say say this is 5 volts any any random thing say say this is 15 ohms so so this is an electric circuit okay there are closed loops you require closed loops for the current to flow and there are resistors so so there are cells so these are the cells there are resistors these are the resistors and they are connected in series or parallel in a closed loop okay so 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 this is a closed loop right 
I start from one point and without any break, okay, without any break anywhere, if I traverse this, I come back to the same point. That is a loop, okay. That's a closed path, okay. Fine. And and, and here there are there are three three independent closed paths. We will see that, okay. Now now if a circuit is given like this, you wonder how do you solve this, correct? How do we solve this? And what do you mean by the solution of the circuit? So I have an electric circuit. So an, an electric circuit. And we'd like to solve this. And what do I mean by solving this? By solving this, you actually mean what are the currents that you expect to be flowing in these, these four branches. Correct? Also, what are the what are the currents that could be flowing here and here and, and in these, right? Now that looks to be a formidable task, fine, but it is not. There are only two things which we'll soon define, and we'll call them by the name of Kirchhoff's law. Kirchhoff's law. That'll help you. Kirchhoff's law. K I R C H O W F. Okay. Kirchhoff's Kirchhoff's law. Laws. Two of them. Okay. So so two of them. They'll be enough for you to to solve any circuit. To solve for any circuit. Okay. And, and by solution, as I told you, we, we want to know, we want to completely define the circuit. That means what are these currents? Say, say if this current is I1, this current is I2, this current is I3, this current is I4. The first question that comes to mind is how did you know that the flow of the current here will be this? Okay. And how do you know, know the current will flow here? So I have to know two things, right? The, the magnitude of the current, I, 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 should, I should be able to define the magnitude of the current the magnitude and and the, the the direction right in what direction is moving by direction we do not do not still mean that the current is a vector quantity that is not the case okay so so magnitude as well as the direction okay so by direction we we, we, we are not treating a current as a as a vector quantity current is not a vector quantity but still we'd like to know whether it is from from right to left or left to right in that sense am i uh, i am defining the direction right so so this is what the direction is okay this is what the what, what the direction is now and and it's really amazing that only these two laws kirchhoff's law Okay, the first one is called the Kirchhoff's current law, and the other one is called Kirchhoff's voltage law. KCL and KVL, which are enough to solve any circuit whatsoever, even when you go to the level of of BTEC or an MTEC in electrical engineering, it is only these two laws which solve any circuit at all, right? The techniques of finding out the solutions for bigger circuits, they may differ, but only the techniques, not the underlying law, right? And these laws are also pretty understandable and simple. So, so this is nothing but Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff's current law. And, and, and this is, this is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, church of voltage law. Now, what does it say? And how is this law so powerful? Okay, what is this law in the first place, right? So, so let us try to discuss what the Kirchhoff's current law is. Current law is. Right?
correct? Kirchhoff's current law. Now let's try to understand. Let's say I have a junction. So the first thing is that it is applied at a junction. Now what is a junction? Okay. A junction is a point from which three or more than three branches originate. Okay. Not necessarily five, but at least three. Okay. Before, before going ahead, I, I'd like to tell you this. Suppose this is a point and and you have this say is this a junction no this is not a junction okay this is this is this point is like any other point like this correct so 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 the current which is coming from here has no other way than to go here so this does not constitute a junction okay so this is not a junction understand there has to be there has to be at least three takeoffs from a junction this is not a junction okay this is this is not a junction why because this is not a junction right so there should be at least so so if if at this point say i have another takeoff point right Something else is taking off. This is a junction. This is a junction. This is a junction. Okay. Now, at this junction, let's say I have currents like these. Okay. Let's say I have current like these and, and let me name them. So I name this as I1, I name this as I2, I name this as I3, I name this as I4, I name this as I5, right? Correct. Right. Now if this is the steady state current, okay, that means they after a point of time they become steady they do not change with time so so we say that they have attained equilibrium if, if that is the case then let's try to see what happens a current the conventional direction of current in this direction is equivalent to some electron moving in this direction is it not some electron moving in this direction and 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 this will constitute say 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 n one number of electrons per second Right? So this is this is n1 i i1 is equal to n1 electrons per second. A and why why do we say like that? Why do we say like that? N1 electrons will constitute say say per per uh, electrons per second. Okay. Now n1 electrons will constitute so much of charge. Okay. Per second. Okay. Per second. So. so so many coulomb per second and, and it becomes n1 e amperes right this is what it becomes ultimately and so is the case for all others so so let us say this this will constitute an electron coming like that right and this will constitute an electron electrons not an electron electrons going like that but as as we have argued we we have said that 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 this current has stabilized so those number of electrons that are moving per second they have also stabilized right is there a just just hold this is n4 number of electrons and and this is n5 number of electrons you should understand one thing in this whole setup that 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 the conventional direction of current is taken in a direction opposite to opposite to the direction of 
of the flow of electrons. So in all these, I have drawn the electron flow to be in the opposite direction to that of the conventional direction of current. We see that? Did you see that? All of us? Yes? No. Now let us try to understand. If these currents are not changing, it means the, the, the flow here is always steadily n1 electrons and n2 in and n3 out and n4 in and n5 out. Is it not? Is it not correct? It is correct. Now, what do you mean to say? If this holds good, it means whatever is entering this junction, whatever is entering that junction, is leaving the junction. I mean to say there is no pileup of electrons at the junction. Okay, so in the steady state, in the steady state, in the steady state, there is no pileup of electrons at the junction. There is no pileup of electron, pileup, there is no pile up of electrons electrons at the junction now why do I say so suppose there is a pile up of electrons at the junction what happens this junction starts becoming a negatively charged charged thing and that charge will start growing correct now it will do two things what will it do it will start if if say say this starts becoming a negatively charged thing here then what happens it will start repelling this electron now that it tries to come in it will it will get repelled and the and the electron that is going like that that will be the the, the 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 this will be repelled and this will also be repelled right electron that has a tendency to go in that direction correct so, so the incoming so the incoming electrons will be Recharged, they will be decelerated while the all outgoing electrons will be accelerated. Okay, what do you mean by accelerated? That means their drift velocity changes. Now, the moment the drift velocity changes, I is equal to NEAVD. Mm -hmm. now, now, if it goes up or down, your I will not be steady, so it will start changing. Correct, and that's why just by looking that the, that the currents there are not changing and that can be established by an experiment <coughs> apart from apart from maybe the resistance effects the, the the heated resistance effects due to these there is no change in the direction in in, in the uh, in the magnitude of the current that is actually going into this junction and that makes it sure that that actually indicates definitely indicates in the direction that the total current that is coming in that, that the total electrons that are coming in is equal to the total electrons that is leaving out right because if that is not so let's say if the incoming currents are are incoming electrons are more and outgoing are less then it's like a traffic situation right it's like a traffic situation more number of cars entering entering a roundabout and, and less number of it leaving will will lead to a pileup at this 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 junction, correct? Right? It's like a traffic situation. Or, or you cannot have more electrons leaving than are coming in, right? Because the, then the conservation of charge gets violated. That cannot happen. That that you send five electrons and ten electrons will leave. They, that's not possible. From where will it leave then? Okay? That's not possible. So what I mean to say is that that the incoming electrons that means the number of electrons that are coming in that is that is n2 plus n4 right is equal to is equal to n1 plus n5 the outgoing ones right plus n3 right these are the these are the incoming electrons incoming electrons number of incoming electrons and they are number of outgoing electrons they are the number of outgoing electrons and they have to be equal now and and, and this is the rate of the electrons we are talking about per second correct 
so so the the whole thing is that what is the charge this is number so 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 what is the charge charge of the incoming is what n to charge per second is n to e plus n four e is equal to n one e plus n five e plus n three e and this is this charge total charge per second and so this actually becomes this actually becomes what this is i2 plus i4 is equal to i1 plus i5 plus i3 correct so what does it tell you and and this is what kirchhoff's current law is the kirchhoff's current law says okay so the Kirchhoff's current law or, or, or the KCL says that the, the total magnitude of the incoming current, the magnitude of the incoming current equals incoming current equals the outgoing current the outgoing currents correct so incoming current is equal to the outgoing current fine no pile up at the junction that is the kirchhoff's current law now let's come back to the circuit so if if, if this is I1, then you see, I cannot put this, this electron in the direction that I have put it in. Correct? This is a series circuit. Why is it a series circuit? Because while traversing this, you do not see any, any wire that is diverting you away. No. You do not have a wire that diverts you away. As long as that happens, if, if you take this point, then whatever is the number of electrons leaving this has to be the number of electrons that are, that are, that are coming in. Correct? So whenever you see that the same current passes through two elements, they will be in series. Right? So, so, so this diversion I had just drawn to show you. So, so whenever, so, so this is, is wrongly, wrongly done. If this is right, then this is wrong, this is wrong, then this is right. If this is right, then this is wrong, and, and if this is right, then this is wrong. Let us say I take the direction to be this, so I erase this direction and convert it into this, right? I convert it into this. Now, by the definition that we saw right now, this forms a junction. Okay, this point is a junction. And what, what do we see? This I1 comes in here, and this I2 comes in here now this also cannot come like that this indicates electrons leaving in that direction this indicates electrons leaving in that direction this also indicates electrons leaving in that direction so from a junction if if all the electrons are leaving away who is supplying those electrons it cannot be the wire that starts supplying it because if the wire starts supplying it then it starts becoming positively charged and first of all from where will it supply it Maybe those deep rooted electrons that, 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 have, that are still bound? No, it does not have that much capacity. It, can only, it is only the valence electrons that participate in conduction. Correct? So, so what happens? So this cannot happen. So, so here, if, if, the, if, if, if there is a current I2 here and there is a current I1 here, those are incoming, then I have to have a current in this direction that will leave. Okay, and I have used I1 plus, so, so, so if, this, this is I, if this is I1, if this is I2, then this current automatically becomes I1 plus I2. Whatever comes in, the total incoming current is I1 plus I2, the total leaving current is also I1 plus I2. Or, or, or you can say, you can say that, you can, you can say that, if, if I write this current, this current to be, to be I4, right, then what happens? Then what happens? I1 plus I2, the incoming current, has to be I4. 
and that's why that's why without writing it as i4 i straight away write it as i minus i2 uh, so what did the i1 minus i2 what the currently writing as i1 plus i2 hmm. shouldn't it be I1? why 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 so the current the current that comes from here is i1 i2 the current that that is coming from here is i1 now they have to add up no if the direction has been opposite then it would have been i1 i2 yeah 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 if the direction was opposite that would have happened so what, whatever you said so we will see we'll see in next next this thing don't worry so let's let's first of all try to try to keep this uh, make this meaningful let's try to apply case here here so this leaving current becomes becomes i1 plus i2 this i4 is no longer required no longer required the okay, i1 plus i2 now this is i1 plus i2 okay so this is say 20 cars coming in and say there are 10 cars leaving out i3 goes away from here so what do i take away here i take let's say 20 are coming in and 10 are going this way then 10 will come this way and you get that as 20 minus 10 let us try to try to do this let us say i1 plus i2 comes in and, and let this be i5 why did you split it into half which why did you say that if 20 is coming in then no no, 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 no. That, that, that's that's just a random example if 20 is coming in then 5 could be going here then 15 will be coming here okay that has nothing to do with with any maths right so so if this is the case the incoming current is i1 plus i2 has to be equal to the outgoing current that is i5 plus i3 so i5 automatically becomes i1 plus i2 minus i3 this is this is i5 right? so how i3 this is i5 how i3 yes. because the incoming current at this junction is i1 plus i2 the outgoing i have equated i3 that i had already named right i had already written it randomly i had i i i whenever you you come across a circuit you randomly give give these directions and then apply kcl at all junction points correct because if and after after you have done that then we will be ready to go for kvl okay so what i am doing i am trying to apply the kcl at each and every junction and the initial currents you are free to take 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 by a literal by a variable and in any direction that you like if you have taken it in the right direction correct direction then the value will come out to be positive if you have taken it wrongly then this value will come out to be negative so so in the final uh, circuit when you are writing the results you should flip the direction of the current change the direction of the current fine so 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 this so i5 becomes i1 plus i2 minus i3 now that is that is by the 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 formal method that we have done below but but let um, take it from me you will require you 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 do not have time to write these okay so what do you do you see that i1 plus i2 is coming you see that i3 goes in that direction so you automatically know that whatever moves here is like that traffic right 20 comes 5 goes for 20 minus 5 15 comes here correct so you should be in a position to write this current straight away as i1 plus i2 minus i3 correct this is i1 plus i2 minus i3 this current now i had taken this as i4 now this tells you that you do not require to take another fourth variable okay you just need not because if you have defined this as i1 this is i2 this is i3 then this automatically becomes in in the stated directions then this automatically will become i1 plus i2 minus i3 in this direction correct so what happens the kcl will 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 actually come in and prevent you from making spurious variables and that is very important there is another way in which we would have we could have done that but but that i'll come to later so so i do not need to take i4 as a variable so so this thing goes away this goes away Okay, this goes away and there will be a current i1 plus i2 minus i3 moving like that 
and this direction that I have taken that is also completely wrong right now this current that comes here keeps on moving like that like that and here as well it is I1 plus I2 minus I3 now what happens in this branch here at this junction I1 plus I2 minus I3 is joined by I3 so what takes off together they come in and, and and this direction is also wrongly taken the blue one so I have to take off a current like that and that current has to be the sum of these two say say five five people which had see from here if 20 was coming in then five 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 cars kind of went here and 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 the rest 15 are coming here then then here they join right at this road they join and and 20 goes ahead so what happens i1 plus i2 minus i3 plus i3 Mm. And that gives you I1 plus I2 in this branch, I1 plus I2 in this branch. And when I1 plus I2 is coming in and I2, if this is I2, this Why is also I2. I2. So I2 is taking off, so I1 plus I2 minus I2. So I and I1, and, and, and not in this direction, this is wrongly shown. So, so in, in this direction, an I1 current goes in and when you look at this, this is I1 in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Now this will tell you, okay, so this, this was the direction of the electron. I, I'll, I'll try to remove that. So this will tell you that you have rightly done the KCL. Okay. Are... Otherwise you do not have time to go at every junction and start writing the KCL, then start putting the values because for a bigger, larger, larger circuit, there should be say 20 junctions. Okay, so half the time you waste just writing this. So you should understand this. If 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 say I'm coming with some some current, I'm I'm coming with some current I1, and say at this point I2 current takes off, then whatever moves here is nothing but I1, I1 minus, minus I2. I1 minus I2. I1 was coming in, I2 went in that direction. So it kind of departed here, right? It left us. I2 current left us. So only the remaining can go there. And it, uh, I even was coming. You, if if you get confused, you just try to do it like this. There, there, there were say say 20 people coming in. Let's say, and I'm only always giving you that 20 and five. So five people went this way. Then only 15 can go this way, right? So that that will make you understand. So if the arrow is pointing towards down. If ar arrow, if if this is the down. direction. Yeah, uh, no sir. In spite of that I1 minus I2, it was down to the direction of I1 only. Which? Vertically downwards. This? No, it cannot be. See, the junction, from the junction, the branches that are going on, it's not necessarily they'll, they'll take uh, vertically downward. Mm -hmm. they, they may go in any direction. They, they may start going like that. See, you what, never know. What if the uh, I1 minus I2 branch? This, this. Yes, this see. is, this is absolutely independent of the direction it has nothing to do with that that's why current is not a vector quantity so so what i mean to say is if you have instead of this branch instead of this branch if you had the branch like that like that or at any other angle like that and this would not have been there and this would not have been there the same current I1 minus I2 would have gone there, I1 minus I2. In fact, that is the primary reason we do not take the current to be a vector. It is absolutely independent of the, of the, of the direction of the wires. We do not talk about the direction. We only talk about the direction of current as, as in going from left to right or right to left. That's all. Okay, that means we just, it has only one dimension to go anywhere, right? Okay, otherwise we do not talk talk of current as a vector because if that would have been the case, it would have actually become very very chaotic and maybe electrical engineering would not have been as it is. Maybe when they come here, they clash and kind of vanish. So this cannot happen because these two electrons, they come in and maybe collide in this direction. It does not mean that they'll kind of get destroyed. Okay, that does not happen. It means that if, if it goes to zero at some particular angle, then it means these two electrons came in and they got destroyed. So the law of conservation of the of the electrons of charges that gets violated. Not possible. Get that? That is not possible. Okay. So, given any circuit, howsoever complicated, what is our aim? What did we do? We just randomly started taking some directions. 
inadvertently do not see do not worry about any of the things what direction should i take it or how many should i take it mm -hmm. i had inadvertently taken here four it automatically will, will get corrected in, in in into the number of variables that are required okay okay Th there is another another uh, 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 kind of perspective to it that i'll come across and why that happens right why that happens so so what happens is what happens here is 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 that you start randomly taking taking this without considering in what direction this is and in what direction is this pointing out okay okay without considering that so i took i1 i2 i3 i4 started applying the kcls the spurious the extra variables will automatically vanish and all the directions of the currents okay you just take them in these branches all other directions will automatically get corrected and when you come back to the last one this i1 and this i1 they should be compatible okay i i went from here when i reached this it actually tells me that yes i1 current is going there is 99% chance that that you will be correct until unless you have made maybe a double mistake which has cancelled okay there is 99% chance that you will be correct now if i had started with an i1 here and i would have got say an an i3 minus i1 coming in it means this is the indicator that you have done something wrong somewhere let us see so so this i1 becomes i3 minus i1 that is not possible so you have made some mistake go back apply the kcl once again get that okay this in 90 99% of the uh, of the cases this will kind of set everything correct so we have to make one source and from that only we have to you start from anywhere you you start kind of uh, naming them it will automatically start eliminating the spurious one so if you go to i4 maybe okay you will you'll find that that it, it is not required as we raised one of them right so this step is the first step okay you start with uh, randomly assigning the direction and the variables and and start applying the kcl at all the junctions and 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 bring the circuit in this form once you have done that then you are ready to apply the kvl okay and the wonder of wonders is there are three variables to be solved the kvl the kirchhoff's voltage law will give you exactly three equations in these three variables and whenever we have the same number of variables and the same number of equations however large the number of variables is it is absolutely exactly solvable provided these three equations are independent of each other okay independent of each other it's like that you won't decide that it is decided from the circuit i'll show you why and how okay it is automatically decided and when you come to this point there is a huge huge convergence with the with the matrices that you have studied in in in, in the maps of cluster okay how this is independent and what should be the value of the matrix they are directly directly related okay <clears throat> that is directly related but we'll go into that nitty gritty after we have done the kirchhoff's voltage law right